Okay, I'm gonna go over it. This is probably online somewhere, but I like to make my own, so I'm gonna make my a video going over the three three ways to measure distances in astronomy. Okay, so the first is uh, the idea of an astronomical unit. So here I have the sun. Don't look at the sun. Okay, you can look at that. And then here's the Earth orbiting the sun. It turns out that the way we find distances in the solar system depends on our understanding of different distances. So the first way to determine the distance to, let's say, Mars was based on the distance of the Earth to the sun. And so it's really difficult to measure yeah, the Earth to the Sun. So it's really difficult to measure that distance. So really, one thing is to say, well, it's it's one. This is one unit. And then everything else is measured in units of that. So we call that unit 1AU, the astronomical dis unit. And it's the distance from the Sun to the Earth. And we could go into how you find that and stuff like that, but <coughs> I don't want to do that because I want to talk about the other ones. But once you do find that distance from the Earth to the Sun, then you don't have to recalculate the distance to Jupiter or the distance to Mars. You just say, oh, well, now I know the conversion unit for one AU. So I, I don't know it off the top of my head. No one knows these things, but I can write down, I'll write it up up here. Can you see if I write it right here? Yeah. One AU equals 1.496 times 10 to the 11th meters. Okay, so just, just for comparison, the distance, the size of the Earth is around 10 to the 6th, so way bigger, which makes sense. Okay, so that's the astronomical unit 1 AU. And it's good for measuring distances to planets and stuff because they're on that same scale. Even Jupiter, you know what, it's like 40 AU or something like that. It's huge, but it's not like 10 to the 50th. Okay. Now, what if I want to measure the distance to a star? Well, AU doesn't really work, right, because it's too far away. So here's where we get to the parsec. And the parsec depends on parallax. Watch this. You can do this yourself with, with your eyes, but I'm going to do it with my, um, let me use this. Okay, so here I have a red pen and a marker. Now, the red pen is over here. I'm not moving my hands, I'm just moving my whole body. Notice that since the red pin is closer, as I shift the viewing position, it appears to shift its position more than something that's further away. When you're driving on the road and you look at a water tower that's very far away, it, it doesn't look like it's really moving that much because it's very far away. Your position is changing, but its angular position isn't changing very much. When you look at the moon, it looks like the moon's following you when you're driving along because the moon is super far away. And if you drive a mile, it's still in the same angular position because it's so far away. We measure distances of stars by looking at how they shift due to their uh, viewing it from a different position. And how do we view it from a different position? Because we're on the Earth and the Earth is going around the sun. Okay, so let me draw a not to scale picture. Here's the sun. Here's the Earth orbiting. And so here it is in January and six months later in what June I don't know if that, what that is and then here's a star that's close by very close and you see here that it looks like it's there with respect to the background stars and then later it looks like it's there with respect to the background stars so this is and actually this is what you should do you should hold your thumb and then close one eye camera one camera two camera one or two and look at where your thumb is with respect to the background and see that shifts and actually the more you hold your thumb away from you the less it shifts the closer you if you move right here it's gone all over the place that's exactly how we measure distances with parallax we need two things we need the size of the shift and the size the size of the, the angular size of the shift and the distance shifted so if I look at right here I have a right triangle this is the radius of the Earth, 1 AU, and this theta is the shift angle. So if I use my trig, I want to find this distance, I'll call that D. So here we're going to use a trig. 
The trick is that I hate this trick too. And I'm like, you can't do that, but you can do this. Okay. These are super, super, super tiny angles. If that's a super tiny angle, this side of the triangle is the same side as that side of the triangle. And you're like, no, no, it's not. Yes, it's close enough. Okay. Which in that case, it doesn't matter which one I use. I can use this uh, arc length equals R theta. That's the, this is theta and that's like part of a circle. It works. Trust me. Trust me. So this would be R then. Okay. But I can call that D. So now if I want to solve for D, I get D equals S over theta equals 1 AU over theta. And so I can find that distance. Now, one parsec equals one AU over one arc second. So one, if the parallax shifts by one arc second of a, of a degree, which is a degree breaking into 60 minutes, you break that minute into 60 seconds. Yeah, I don't know why they do that, but they do it. Okay, it's fine. It's an old thing then that shift would equal one parsec. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going to calculate that distance in meters for you. Okay, so let's calculate one parsec. In, and so if you, as you move further away, then your angular shift would be smaller. So you're further, you, you get a greater distance in parsecs. Okay. okay, so all we have to do is to calculate one parsec is to make a one second shift and with the with the astronomical unit of AU. So I'm going to say distance is, that's a D, it's supposed to be a D, is one AU, which I'm going to, I want this in meters, so I'm going to put that in meters, 1.496 times 10 to the 11th meters. And I need my angle, in order for this to work, theta would have to be in radians. So now I need to get theta in of one second in radians. So let's say um, theta is going to be, so if I have one minute, one minute is one sixtieth of a degree. One second is one sixtieth of a minute. So one arc second is going to be one over 60 times 60 degrees. So one over 3600. Now I need to convert that to radians. So that's in degrees. So if I multiply 180, no, wait, yeah, that's in degrees. So I need to multiply by pi radians divided by 180 degrees. And I get my answer. Now I don't have a calculator, I have a computer. I'm gonna put this in my, my computer just to make everyone happy. So I'm gonna say uh, pi divided by 3600 times 180 and I get 4.84481 times 10 to the negative sixth. That's my angle. Now I'm going to find the distance. So the distance is going to be one. Oh, I have it up here. So I'm going to put that angle right here, and I get 4.8481 times 10 to the negative six. And that will give me my. What am I solving for here? Oh, the distance for one parsec. That's what. <laughs> yeah, because that's the. Okay, so now let's do that. So I have uh, D equals 1.496 E to the 11th divided by the angle of 4.8481 times 10 to the negative 6 radians. Print D. Three point oh eight six times ten to the sixteenth meters. And that's equal to one 
parsec. See, wasn't that fun? I had fun. Okay, wait, we're not done. Let me just check. I wrote this down. Yep, that's the right answer. Okay, now there's one other way to determine, to measure distance, describe distances for things, and that's using the speed of light. So if I have, uh, if I clap really loud, or I have, if you go to track me and you hear a, a starter pistol, and you're on the other side of the track, you can, you see it flash, and then you hear it, because the speed of sound takes some time to get there. Light's the same way. Light takes time to travel. And if I know the time it takes to travel, and the speed of light, which is constant, I can calculate the distance. So the speed of light, so we'll call that C, is 2.99 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So the, the unit of light year is the distance light travels in one year. So C equals delta X over delta T. If you want to call it D over T, that's not really the best way, but I would, I'll forgive you for that. You can do that. D over T. So I want to find D. So D equals C times T. So the speed of light times the time. So how long is one year? Well, that's one year is the time. But I want it in seconds to cancel the seconds in meters per second. So T equals one year. Now I'm going to multiply that unit conversion. I'm going to say there are 365 days in one year, and the years cancel. And then I need to convert days to hours, so I say there are 24 hours in one day. Now I need to convert hours to minutes and minutes to seconds, so I'm going to do that one step. So I'm going to say there are 3,600 seconds in one hour. Cancel, 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 cancel. I get the time in seconds. Uh, I, can, I can do this. Let's do this real quick. T equals three, one, I'll do it the right way, one times 365 times 24 times 3600. So T, the time of one year, one year is equal to 3.154 times 10 to the seventh seconds. So 30 million seconds. That's a long time. Well, it's just one year. What? A lot of seconds. Okay, so now I can calculate uh, my distance right here. The distance is going to be the speed of light, 2.99 times 10 to the eighth meters per second times 3.154 times 10 to the seventh seconds, the seconds cancel, and I get the distance in meters. So I get uh, C equals 2.99 E6, E8, oops. So DD equals C times T, print. And I get I'm just checking to see if I have the right answer to write it down. One light year. I didn't write it down. Okay, well, I'm going to trust this is true. So I get 9.42 times 10 to the 15th. That seems short. 9.49 meters. Okay, I'm going to Google it real quick one light year in meters. Oh, that's right. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so that's C, that's uh, one light year. One LY equals 9.42 times 10 to the 15th meters. Boom, three distance units in astronomy the end. I had fun.